Hey guys, it's Paige Poppy. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. I am really excited to be back in my studio today because I've actually been traveling for the last 18 days, which is super long, and I've missed so much just being in my studio painting and filming. So I'm happy to be back filming this. And all of that travel will explain why I'm not gonna film my face today. Um, I just worked out and traveling left me a little bit rough, so I don't really want to be on camera today. So if you are new here, you can go back and look at any of my other videos and see what I look like if you're curious. But today, I just thought I would focus on just the materials because that's the point of today's video anyway. So today we are going to focus all on materials for watercoloring and I've had a lot of friends and people who just follow my blog and my Instagram and whatever what I'm up to and they're always curious about watercolor supplies and where to start and what I recommend and I tell them individually but I thought that might be something that a lot of people want to know about so I thought I would make a little video and this isn't the entire expanse of all of my watercolor painting supplies but I know that many of you may not be familiar with the medium or not sure where to start and it can really be affordable and easy and really fun so it doesn't have to be this huge investment and that's what I want to focus on today is if you're new to it um, basically showing you where to start so let's go ahead and jump right into it um, I keep a lot of my supplies in this pouch here uh, I shared this in one of my haul videos and I like it because it's vinyl so all of my paints and stuff if anything's wet it won't ruin the interior of it it's a betsy johnson case from michael's and i feel like what we should talk about first is the actual paints and yes mine's very messy and in this little kit i have here these paints are different than these ones so i want to make sure i separate the pans and i'm going to talk about both of them in my video but i will start with the koi watercolors first so I've actually had this little Koi watercolor pocket field sketch box made by Sakura since I was 12 years old, if you can believe that. And yes, the paints still do work. It's pretty insane. But this was such an awesome tool for me when I was a beginner at a young age because it's compact, it's pretty affordable. I believe these retail for $22 to $24. And it came with 12 paints, a mixing area, a brush and a sponge which I don't have anymore after you know 10 years of owning this. <laughs> I think the best part about this for beginners is that it comes with this little brush and you might be curious about how this works. So first you have the tip here and you take the cap off and you have your little brush which mine still held up pretty well over the years and then you have this little case that is a container of water so you can actually be traveling out in the Sahara Desert and not have access to any water but if you pre-fill this before you left you would be good to go and you just take the cap off set it aside and you screw this on to the top and then you take the cap from before and you put it on the bottom and you automatically have a brush that has water in it so you can just squeeze it out and there you can see I have the water and then it activates my paint so that is really cool for a beginner and you can see it makes nice strokes and holds color really well. So that was really cool and I think it helped me keep my interest when I was young. And I remember I used to bring this on family vacations and I would paint landscapes and stuff. So it's a really cool tool. And the kit has 12 colors. There's reds, blues, and greens, a black. This was a white and um, I used all of it. A little disclaimer is that you should actually never need a white paint when you watercolor. Um, if you want to make a color lighter, you should just paint less saturation of that color onto the paper. You don't need to mix it with white. But in this kit, they do provide you with white. So if you're a beginner and you need white to get started, you know, why not? What is the big deal? I think it's fun and it gives you practice. But using white paint is more something that you would do with acrylics or oils rather than watercolor. But it gets the job done. So there's a great range of colors. The only thing I don't like about these too much anymore is that they're a little bit chalky. And having used different paints at this point, I don't enjoy using them as much. But like I said, great for a beginner, very affordable. 
and especially when you're just starting out learning something you don't want to spend a ton of money to buy paints or to buy anything for your new hobby because you want to make sure that you like it first and that you enjoy it so this is a great set to start with and you get 12 colors like I said I'm not a fan of the consistency as much so that's why I also want to talk about these little pans so these pans are made by Windsor Newton I believe and you can buy them in multiple sizes they're very cool you just buy them individually wrapped and this is what I use for all of my current watercolor today and the ones that I sell everything I only need these three little pans so I was required to buy these for a watercolor class I took while I was studying abroad in Copenhagen which is why I purchased them they do cost about five to six dollars a piece so they're a little bit expensive for each pan but if you think about it you spend $18 on these three colors versus this kit you get more colors it's $24 so it's a little bit more expensive you do get a lot more things with this kit but with these you only need the three colors so you might be kind of confused when I say that the reason is that you can just mix the colors to get the color that you want so I would mix the red and yellow and I would add a little more yellow and I would get orange so for someone who's a little bit more advanced and feels comfortable enough and confident to mix colors this is a good option but for a beginner let's say you're not completely confident mixing colors and you really want like a lime green it's there for you and it's pre-made which is cool the reason I use these is because the quality is really awesome and they're very smooth to the touch of your brush the paint comes off very nice and um they're also smooth just in the view you can tell the comparison of these two that this is a little bit more dull and these are really shiny but even though i said these a little bit more advanced i still recommend these to beginners just because the quality is so awesome and i do think that quality really changes how your paintings come out it really does make a difference um just like the quality of painting your own house or maybe like the quality of makeup you buy it makes a difference so that's why i like using these and i keep them in my kit here because i still have these awesome mixing pans so even though i'm not touching these paints i still really love this kit another idea i have is that if you chose to only buy these three pans you could just put them in a little altoids tin or some kind of leftover soap dish, makeup container, something you would take on the go if that's appealing to you, and you'd be set. So it's still not a super expensive option. Just make a little set for yourself and you're good to go. And quickly, I cannot forget my Peerless watercolors, which I recently made a whole video about. If you haven't seen it, go check it out now because I go really in depth about what these are. But these are paper pigments that are watercolors. Here is a sheet I created of all of the colors that you get inside here. And this is really cool for beginners because you can literally put it inside your watercolor notebook like this and be ready to go. And it's pretty awesome. The only reason I would recommend maybe these paints or these paints to a beginner before I recommended these was that I think these would run out rather quickly and if you're beginning I would want you to have a lot of paint to work with and a lot of time to just spend and enjoy them and it would be kind of a bummer to run out of these but if you're looking for something extremely compact then this would be good for you. Now since I talked about this brush um, and I said I do not use this brush anymore because I prefer to have a brush that I can dip into the water I think it's a good time for me to talk about the brushes I use. So typically when I use this type of brush, I will just dip into the water to use it. And it's also a good tip that I will share with you that you should never make the water go high enough that it gets on the metal portion of your paintbrush up here because over time it'll wear away the glue that attaches your brush's bristles to this piece so you would like the water to ideally not come past that level i think sometimes people tend to fill the cup all the way up and want to really get it in there but you only need a little bit of water this is this is less than i would put in water but you get the idea so these are the two brushes i'm using right now and they're very affordable for beginners which is why i chose these two to talk about today they're both around eight or nine dollars so i hope that's a cheap option for you you could always go to a local 
art store and talk to someone and they might have two to four dollar options for you as well. But the really good all around brush in my opinion is this Robert Simmons White Sable number no. 10 brush. I've talked about it in at least two videos now and it's just great and when you first look at it you think like wow that's really a lot of large bristles. You think that it's going to be way too large and it's going to just make the paint go everywhere but it actually comes to a very fine point here at the tip and the watercolor just spreads over the page and you can also take the tip and get more detailed areas so it's not something you should be intimidated by it's actually a very good all-around brush for all sizes of strokes because it allows you to do detail and also large swatches across a page and I'm sorry I'm not using a piece of watercolor paper, I just don't feel like wasting a sheet today, but you get the idea. This is a great all-around brush. And another size I have is the size 6, and until recently I hadn't been familiar with using a smaller point brush. I used to use this one, but it had been a long time since I used that point. These actually look about the same size, but I had really been focused on using just this one size. So this was kind of a change for me, but... It really is kind of nice to have a detailed point if that's something you desire. Um, you can get some nice lines with it and you can also get some big strokes with it as well. But if you're trying to save a little bit of money, you only need this one honestly, but it can be fun to have more than one in your collection. And quickly I want to talk about a couple supplies of, for watercoloring that you probably already have around your own house. I use a just standard whatever paper towel to clean off my brush in between colors so I get it wet and then make sure it comes out clear which it is right now which is good. Also it's good to have some pencils if you want to do a really light sketch before you lay down watercolor or even a heavy sketch depending on what your style is and as you paint you will find your style. Um, it helps to have a kind of graphite pencil that is a really light one so 2H or 4H can be really good for that so that's nice but honestly if you only have just a regular penciling around your house it's not the end of the world you can just draw lightly on your paper and you should be fine or you can just choose not to sketch at all and I think lastly we can just talk about the watercolor papers that you'll need obviously to start your ideas and is the perfect time for me to film this video because I just picked up these watercolor papers and I know the prices and I think that they're really affordable. So I'm excited to share these with you guys. The first the first one is this little watercolor postcard notebook by Strathmore and it comes with 15 sheets. I got this for under $5. I think it was $4.80 and these are so cool. I've used postcard size paper before but I've never seen any that actually have the postcard little setup right on the back of it. So how cute is that? You could pack this in your suitcase when you travel. You could paint a bunch of small quick watercolors and send them off to your family and friends of like the place you're visiting. So I love that. And I like these even if I'm not going to send them to someone. I just like having a smaller canvas to work with. It's a little bit less overwhelming. So especially for a beginner, this could be great for you just to try out some things. And for 15 sheets at under $5, it's only like 30 cents a sheet. So you're really going to be having fun and not spending too much on your new hobby. So I love these and the quality of paper is very nice. And while I was traveling to Boston, I was actually in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I picked this bad boy up and something I was lacking was a watercolor sketchbook that I could keep with me and take on the go and kind of have all the pages stay in the spine and um, I believe if you wanted to cut one of these sheets out you could just do so with an exacto knife and it wouldn't be a big deal and these this is 7.75 inches by 9.75 inches so it's almost an 8 by 10 but a little bit smaller which is okay for framing because it would just fit nicely inside of your frame but anyway back to the paper this is by Strathmore you get 48 sheets in this um book here and it's 140 pound paper which is a really nice heavy weight and each sheet feels really thick good quality when i was looking at the other watercolor sketchbooks in the art store there weren't a lot of thick options which kind of disappointed me so i was really excited when i found this i had to search around and i found it this was about 18 dollars 
which was a lot more affordable than some of the other notebooks I saw that were $30, $35. So you get quite a lot of sheets and this could be really fun to throw in your backpack and get to work on. And actually, I should know, I just sat here and counted the pages and it's actually 24 sheets of paper, but they wrote 48 pages because they're considering the back and the front each a page. Which I had to admit kind of bothers me because when it comes to watercoloring, I do not like painting on the other side of the paper after I've painted on one side. So now I'm really only getting 24 sheets out of this book, which is fine, I guess, but... I thought it was going to be 48 sheets, so I guess I should have looked at that better, but still, I really recommend this. I think it's awesome, and if you guys are looking to check out any of these supplies that I shared with you, they are all available, and I'm going to link them all down below so you can easily check them out if you would like to and try them out for yourself. Alright guys, that's all I had to share with you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful, and it will inspire you to start watercoloring yourself. And if you're not already, please subscribe to my channel, join in on the creative fun here. I make new videos every Tuesday and I'd love to have you here. You can also find me on my Instagram or my blog. All the links will be down below. And until next time, I am sending you guys positive and creative vibes your way and I will see you in my next video. Bye.